Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Elisabetta, an Italian watercolor artist, and uh, I'm passionate about art supplies and pigments. I recently swatched uh, these uh, 24 uh, Paul Rubens uh, tubes, uh, watercolor tubes that I pour into this uh, practical tin box. And uh, you will find the link to the video with the review and the swatching in the notes. But today I'm very curious to find out how many greens I can swatch with the, the four yellows that I have and the five blues. These are all single pigment paints, so I thought that uh, I could easily mix them without getting a muddy result. So let's start with the cobalt blue. I wet my paper and I will swatch them directly on paper. So cobalt blue. Cobalt blue is here. Cobalt blue, and I will swatch it with permanent lemon yellow. Let me mix it with permanent lemon yellow, and uh, this is the green that I get, very nice uh, leafy green, a bright uh, yellow green that um, I can easily use for leaves, trees, top branches. Let's go to the medium cadmium yellow. Cobalt blue, always. Cobalt blue is uh, PB28. They're all single, single pigments, this paint, which is great. And the cadmium yellow is medium cadmium yellow. It's a very rich, intense paint. You see, it's very, very rich. Let's add some water. Let's mix them directly on paper. It's a bit overwhelming, this uh, yellow, so I will add some cobalt. Wow, it's a uh, nerdy muted uh, yellow. There is a nice uh, color separation and uh, you know that the cadmium colors are very opaque, so the result is a, an opaque green uh, muted in its tone. Look how different it is from the um, green that we get with the lemon yellow. Let's go to Indian yellow. Indian yellow is almost uh, an orange, so probably it will be very muted. But let's see and find out. Cobalt. and Indian yellow. Yes, it's a darker green compared to the previous one. Oops. And uh, It's very muted. There is an earthy undertone. Nice color separation, nice granulation. This thanks to cobalt blue, which is a very granulated color. And it's really pretty because this uh, uh, let me see the two colors in a nice color separation. So I think it is a lovely green actually. 
and let's mix it with the yellow ochre now clean water these paints are so easy to re-wet that I have not reactivated them before There is a grey undertone, it's a moss, it's almost a moss color with a grey undertone. Let's uh, see what color we get when uh, it is dry. But you see it's a gradient and um, it's uh, from a vibrant uh, hue to a very earthy, mossy hue. Let's go to French. Uh, Ultramarine, it's PB29. Let's wet the paper first. This, <laughs> this color runs across the paper. It's very, very fluid, which is very nice. Let's mix it with permanent and lemon yellow. Very curious to see the difference with the Mix with cobalt. It's slightly darker, but uh, you know, these uh, swatches are handmade. So there is also maybe more yellow, more ultramarine. Ultramarine is also granulating color. So you see the nice color separation. And um, let's let it dry. It's a very vibrant uh, yellowy green. Let's add some more yellow here to see the difference. Okay, let's move to the cadmium yellow. Cadmium yellow, you remember, is opaque, so the result is always more opaque. It's enough to touch uh, the ultramarine to, to melt it. It just runs across the page. Uh, it's a lovely feeling, I like this sensation. And swatching is always such a relaxing uh, activity. I, when I'm bored or when I have a creative block, I just swatch my colors. As I said before, this cadmium yellow is really over overwhelming. So I will add some uh, blue. They fight a little, don't uh, easily mix on paper. They separate, which is a nice effect that I like when I get color separation. And uh, let's go to the next one. Next one is with Indian yellow. So, because it's an orangey color, I should probably mute down my Blue also, blue, how vibrant uh, this uh, French ultramarine is. Let's go to Indian yellow. Yes, it's very muted. Strong color separation. Try to mix them slightly more, but not too much because I like the color separation. It's really a lovely effect. You see the yellow showing through. It's very nice. We'll judge them definitely once they're dry. And now we go to the yellow ochre. The yellow ochre is PY42, so it's a Mars yellow. It's not 43, it's a synthetic pigment, which is usually very clean pigment. So I go with my blue. And then I add my yellow ochre. I think this is gonna be nice, nicer than cobalt. Cobalt can be a little dull in mixes.
I will add some more yellow ochre maybe. And more blue also. It's almost a gray. There is no way to turn it to green. It's very dull green. Almost a gray. But uh, I don't mind it. I think it's cute. Let's go to the Prussian blue. Prussian blue. It's a very, usually very vibrant, fresh color that I like to use for sky or Mediterranean sea. So, Prussian blue. Permanent yellow. Hmm. How vibrant. Is this the most vibrant that uh, we've had so far? Wow. It's a lovely, beautiful, clean green. Can you see? Now, we mix it with cadmium yellow. And once again, a very vibrant, uh, clean green. Prussian is not a granulating blue, so you get this very um, homogeneous, flat, uh, uh, but vibrant wash. Very nice for house plants, for instance. These are more for landscape, I would say, but these are for house plants. Let's mix it with the yellow. I'm really curious to see the result. Let's go to Indian yellow. Once again, surprising. It's a, it's a beautiful, vibrant, muted green it's not earthy but it's uh, it is a dark uh, beautiful green i must say that so far maybe this uh, green with uh, prussian blue are my favorite let's see with yellow ochre because until now yellow ochre has given not great results let's see now because yellow ochre is a bit uh, opaque and it dulls down colors. But once again, with Prussian blue, the result is very beautiful. It's vibrant, it's a dark green. Lovely for forest, for instance, trees. I'm enthusiast of this uh, exercise. It's always a pleasure to discover all the mixes that you can get with some basic colors. Let's go to sea blue. Sea blue is a um, phthalo green shade. So it's already on the green side. It's a beautiful, beautiful color for sky and sea. Maybe too much. Let's go and add some lemon yellow surprisingly we get a dark uh, yellow and maybe because there was a lot of blue very very nice wash that's a, a grass uh, green lovely it's not granulating this as well then we go and mix our sea blue 
with some cadmium yellow. Let's find out what we get. And once again, this is incredibly vibrant. This is sea blue. And uh, it has a very nice value range, you see, from dark to light. I like it a lot. It's also more natural, more muted compared to the previous one. This is more muted and it's easier to use in landscapes, for instance. Now with Indian yellow, which is always surprising, I find. Sea blue. Indian yellow. Definitely a green. Definitely a green, a muted olive green that was not in the set, we were missing an olive green. So, wonderful, really wonderful green. And now the yellow ochre. Sea blue. An opaque, uh, an opaque muted green. Quite dark, uh, very opaque, very nice. Let me check. Now, the last one, which is uh, blue. Blue is a cobalt oxide uh, color. It's uh, PB36. Uh, It's a lovely color by itself, I find. It's ideal to mix, I think, but we will verify it uh, now. It's more difficult to mix. It doesn't run like uh, Phtal or Blue Sea, the Sea Blue or Prussian, Prussian Blue, but uh, it's a nice effect. It's more granulating, I think. Let's mix it with the cadmium yellow. Cadmium yellow is always a bit difficult to mix because it's a very, stays put, it doesn't move very much. Um, light uh, olive green, now with India yellow, so I'm not sure it's going to be nice because I don't see them together, but you know, there's always surprises. Indian yellow. Mm. Yes, sir. it's a nice muted green. And with a very nice color separation, lovely granulation. I don't mind it at all. And uh, last but not least, we have our problematic child, the yellow ochre. Let's see. Yellow ochre is an opaque color, I remind you, so it's 
sometimes the result is a bit dull but uh, we need uh, some dull greens in landscape sometimes so okay while we let this dry i will show you i will swatch the pure colors permanent lemon yellow Indian yellow. This is my favorite yellow by far. I use this very much in skies or landscapes. Idea of, or um, inside houses to warm uh, up the windows and yellow ochre. Now we go to the blue cobalt. Lovely granulating color PB28, ultramarine, very vibrant, I never use it straight from pan, but look how lovely, strong granulation. Now the Prussian blue, use them all. Sea blue, Deep sea. It makes me feel like going to the beach. And then the blue, which is cobalt oxide. This is also lovely, lovely blue. Okay. We let them dry and we come back. Okay. I made myself a cup of coffee because I'm a coffee lover and uh, let's see now that everything is dry what we get. Uh, first of all I see a really wide range of greens uh, and um, it would be a pity not to use uh, yellows and blues uh, with a single pigment formulation without mixing them to get um, your greens. So when I started painting, I always used convenience greens straight from the palette, but now I have a tendency to mix my own greens or at least mute the existing greens um, with uh, maybe some brown, some yellow ochre, or uh, darken them with some blue. By the way, these are the greens that uh, you get uh, in this set. There is a yellow green, there is a true green, but they're all multi-pigment. They're very nice, uh, but uh, they are multi-pigment. Then you have the hooker's green, which is very, very pretty. And then you have emerald green, a nice uh, mixing green. Okay, so what can we say? that uh, for sure this uh, uh, yellow green we could uh, obtain it uh, by mixing uh, some of these blues for instance Prussian blue and permanent yellow you can reach uh, a very nice yellow green uh, without using this uh, convenience color and uh, you can vary composition so you get uh, nice um, values, uh, value range that you cannot get when you have uh, uh, convenience green straight from the pen. We have a whole range of colors from the most vibrant uh, lemony ones to the muted ones. I think that uh, I'm not uh, really crazy about the mixes with yellow ochre are a bit dull except for the mix with the Prussian blue. 
The Indian yellow gives uh, great, great results with all colors, except maybe for cobalt, but Prussian blue and sea blue, they are wonderful. And also I like very much the brilliant uh, blues that you get with the permanent yellow. Permanent yellow is always a very clean paint and uh, it gives you lovely, lovely greens. Also, the cadmium yellow adds a touch of uh, earthy tone to some of this blue. I don't like it with the ultramarine. It becomes grayish, but with Prussian blue and with cobalt blue, it gives a muted tone that is really very interesting. So I encourage you to try your selfie. You take your watercolor set of any brand, you mix uh, blues and uh, yellows and you see what you get if you have loved this video it would be lovely if you could uh, put me a thumb up or a thumb down if you haven't liked it and um, i regularly upload new videos new reviews if you are interested in my videos you can subscribe to my channel so you will not miss one single new video thank you and uh, I'll see you next video.